Were you a freshman at NC State? No, I was at Duke. Oh. Yeah, when that went on at NC State. Yeah, my dad was a freshman at NC State. Okay. All right. I was going to know some NC State insult, but I don't know your dad well enough to do that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so now the now my little bar continues. Now it gets into here. It's gotten that far. It's still moving to the right. And now it's in. Now it is. Yeah. yeah. So now we have a change in the magnetic flux. Which way will the current flow through my thicker red wire? Well, we need the induced magnetic field to be in the opposite direction into the board. Okay. Right? Why? So because the magnetic field here is coming out of the board and we need it to oppose it so it does not get stronger because nature doesn't want it to get stronger. Okay. So I'm taking a shot at this and saying we're going to point our thumb in the direction that we want the magnetic field to go and say the current is going to go clockwise, which is what I assume you meant by to the right. And yes. That is the, the reasoning is spot on. It's going to go this way. Literally, how did you do that? That was just magic, Anna. Like, I, I wouldn't be able to repeat it, I promise. Because the magnetic flux is getting larger, because the area is changing. The area that magnetic field is going through is changing as it comes in. Magnetic field is not changing, just the area. So the flux is increasing as it comes this way, and you want to, you don't want the increase in flux. Just a bad idea. So the current is going to, the induced current will be such that the magnetic field is going opposite. Now, the, oh, I'm sorry, how is the area increasing? Because I thought the area was referring to this rectangle of magnetic field. The area here, when you're talking about this, it's the magnetic field times the area. So I've got basically at that moment right there, I mean that, the big one's the full wire. I got a magnetic field going through half of it. So my magnetic flux would be whatever my magnetic field is times just the area of this piece. Okay, so before this square loop of wire entered the magnetic field, the area was equal to zero. Right. Okay. Okay. Now it's completely inside, still moving to the right. What's the induced current now? Well, the area is no longer changing. Okay. So is there no induced current? Correct. The flux is constant. And now it starts to leave. So the area changed. All right, so we have an area change. What's happening to the flux? It's also changing. Um, Getting bigger or smaller? Smaller. So without the question mark. Smaller. <laughs> smaller, right? Therefore, which way will the current be induced? Because the magnetic flux is getting smaller, we need to boost it up because it hates the, the change. And so this time the current will be flowing right. counterclockwise. Right. Questions up to here. Now I've got a giant magnet here. I've got a north end and a south end. And in between here, I have a loop of wire. This, this right here is just some sort of, no, let's do it that way. Um, imagine a loop of wire that is attached, has something that can spin. So we can spin this. So first off, the magnetic field lines, which way will the magnetic field lines act in the middle here? Uh, towards each other. Opposite? Wait, no, it runs either from north to south or north to oh. south to west. I think north to south. Yes, external to the magnet, north to south. Internal to the magnet, it's gonna flow the other way. Mm. All right, so the magnetic field lines are flowing this way. Where's my hula hoop? There it is. So 
Yes, yeah, so under the drawing square, and this is this is round. Hope you can deal with it. All right, so if I've got my north end over there, my south end over there, so the magnetic field lines are shooting that way. I've got my coil of wire here. So what's so as my coil of wire spins, what's happening to the flux? It's increasing and decreasing. Yeah. The is changing. So what I'm doing is I'm basically creating a current in my loop here that's traveling one way, then it'll travel the other way. Or, depends on how you want to look at it. So just by getting that thing to spin, I create a current in this. If I connect this wire, so make, let's say that's not the circuit, but the circuit basically is running like that. Then I have these little brushes against something. I can create some sort of device out here where the brushes and have little brushes at the end of this wire that are basically touching the metal so I have contact with something at all times. What happens is that I can basically create current. Uh, well, I am creating current. Basically, I can create current that's going to flow one way, and then depending on how this is set up, I can have it flow one way, then the other way. One might even say that the current alternates. This is the basis for alternating current. I change how this is connected up here, and then I can have the current always go in the same direction. Direct current. In the US and I assume Canada, the current as it flows, uh, the current basically, if I plotted the current first time, the current is flowing like that. Flowing in one direction, stops, then flows in the other direction. In Europe, they have a different coupling system there. Basically, that's the way it works. Now, the current that's being produced out of this depends on how quickly that the magnetic flux is changing, which means that as this thing is spinning, the faster you spin it, well, the more rapidly the flux changes, so you can get not only change in frequency, but you can get the change in amplitude. Then you have current flowing along, and it gets to a certain point where, well, the voltage coming out of the power, if this is a power station, the voltage coming out of that is much larger than what our, we can handle in our houses. So we need to somehow get it down into something that's reasonable, something that's not going to fry our entire house. So if I have... a device here where the current's constantly flowing back and forth, and then I have another device here. I basically am creating a magnetic field, and make it, the magnet, magnetic field's getting bigger and smaller, bigger and smaller, bigger and smaller. That magnetic field is going to affect this, getting bigger and smaller, so I'm gonna basically induce a current over here. This is, will then move down to a lower voltage, something that our house can handle. This device that I just sort of outlined here is the transformer. Of course, more than meets the eye. Yes, yes, I was waiting for that. <laughs> I was hoping somebody would say it. That's so satisfying. <laughs> the person who figured this out is Tesla. Now when I have direct current, and I am sending direct current along power lines, there's a lot more loss with direct current than there is with alternating current. If we were in a direct current society here, at least at this point, uh, when they were coming up with the convention, when they were coming up with the direct, this, if we were doing direct current, we'd have to have power plants a lot closer to the houses. And at that point, coal, a lot of coal burning plants. Tesla made it possible to crank this up to actually you comes out of the power uh, out of the power station. It gets cranked up to a huge voltage, 
and then comes back. So you you step it up, and then you step it back down when it gets closer to the houses. Which made that I don't need as many power plants. They don't need to be as close. I can have power plant much farther away, and then supply it to a, a city or something like that. There was a huge fight over which group was going to get it, what the standard in the US would be. Edison was in favor of DC. Uh, Westinghouse gave backing to Tesla, and Westinghouse was pushing AC. And one of the things Edison did to try to get people off of wanting to do alternating current was uh, there were a couple of demonstrations where he electrocuted, I think an elephant got electrocuted. Uh, he wanted people to oh, associate awesome. death terrible. with alternating current. So he electrocuted an elephant? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That made people like it. Is that actually happened? Oh, yeah. That's so sad. And ultimately, there was this big bid for the Niagara Falls power plant, and Westinghouse ended up winning that one, and that was basically the last stake in the heart of D.C. for this country. <laughs> and then Westinghouse exploited Tesla, and he died. Tesla died a poor man. But we got a unit named after him. <laughs> yeah, there's those unsung geniuses. Um, well, I guess he is praised. But there's also the guy who invented touch tone telephones, also did. See, also the guy who did the modem. And there was like four major inventions that was created by this inventor who also died penniless. But, uh, <laughs> and then on the flip side of it, there was the inventor who came up with the catalytic converter, which allowed us to have get leaded gasoline, which, you know, basically my youth and your dad's youth apparently, yeah. uh, inhaling a lot of lead. <laughs> Road rage. Yeah. And um, was the same guy who figured out to use Freon in refrigeration units, which has depleted some of the ozone layer. So he's, the guy, I can't think of his name either, credited with having done more damage to the environment than any other single person. Wow. Oh, I see. Anyway, on that jury note, please don't do more damage than that guy. And I thought 